Welcome to showcasing new X12 enhancements. My name is John Goodgame. I'm a sales engineer working out of the Cambridge office. Today's agenda is reviewing the X12 enhancements for major enhancement details and the enhancement demonstrations. Hopefully the benefits you'll receive out of this session will be the ability to use SNP X12 validation, be able to map X12's messages easily, and the ability to process SOAP and batches. The list of enhancements for the X12 module is validation of SNP1 and SNP2 support with 999 acknowledgments, which include error messaging and segment identification. The consolidated DTL interchange group with child segments in a single map, which uses the new X12 helper functions that are designed to make your mappings much more easy. The XML schema import, which is a new version of the XML model designed by EDI, but we still support the Ceph uh, imports. The X SOAP support commonly used for eligibility requests and batch processing. What is SNP? Well, Weedy SNP is work group for electronic data interchange, strategic national implementation process, which is obviously why we use the short term SNP. Uh, these levels include level one through seven. Iris for Health and Health Connect both use the enhanced SNP features. SNP level one, SNP level two. SNP level one is format validation. SNP level two implementation guide requirements, including repeat counts, loops, and segments. Segment exists where there's expected to exist, valid codes, as well as hierarchy levels and sequencing. X12 validation exists on the service settings when you create your interface. You can set the validation mode to SNP and the SNP level. The X12999 messages include the SNP level one and two 999 response, including the error message and the definition that show the error and the location of that error along with the value. X12 DTL mapping is drag and drop now. As you can see in this Example, ISA segment and the functional groups and transaction sections are all in the same mapping. Importing new schemas with XSD or XML as well as Ceph is now available. The XML enhancements include SNP1, SNP2, and 99 error response, which we'll demonstrate now. Before we show the demonstration, we're going to look at this file that's going to be processed. In this file, I've highlighted the SNP1 error where the length of the name is too long to be processed and the SNP level 2 error where the gender code is listed as K. The SNP1 and SNP2 errors will both be reported. I have three files that we will process. There's a good file that has no errors. The second file will have the name error, which is only SNP level 1 error. And the third file will have SNP level one error with the name and also the SNP level two error with the gender code. We'll process all three files with the settings set to SNP level two because SNP level two will also include any SNP level one errors. Here I have a standard production. I have the service file for the X12, I also have a router for the X12, whereas the, and also the file operation where the successful messages will go. I also have an acknowledgement section which will handle any errors. We're going to go ahead and change our batch handling to whole batch mode, and we're also going to change the validation mode to SNP. SNP level will be set to two, which again will include all SNP one level errors. We can compile this now, or apply this. Now I've got four different uh, tabs open here where I'm going to process all the messages into the in folder on the top left. And as they get processed, a good message will go to the right into the out folder as a successful message. As we can see, this message has been processed and we will now look at the message trace. So the message came into the interface, and as you can see, the entire message is there. It was processed with the wrapper, the interchange wrapper around the message. If you click on the segment, 
you will be able to see the details of that message. So in the group documents, and then we go into the transaction set, we can see all these details of the message and we can see it was successfully processed. The parent segments could be clicked at the top to return. Now let's go ahead and process this SNP level one error, which had the name that was too long. So if we drop the SNP level one message into the in folder, we can see that the name is too long and it should throw a SNP level one error. We've left the gender correct at this point. Now, as you can see, this message will get processed and will drop into the acknowledgement folder, which is where we handle our errors. If we look at the message trace on this message, we can see that this message only came in and went to the file operation ACK, which tells us it was not processed successfully and that there's an error. As you can see, the last name was there too long. And if we drill into the resulting message, it is a 999 acknowledgement with the error codes that indicate that the last name field was too long in the NM1 segment with error of five, which means that the segment was too long. Now for our final test, we will test the SNP level two error messages. We will drop SNP level two into the inbound, and again, we should see this fall into the acknowledgement folder. And as you can see, it did. And we now have a SNP level two error, which includes the SNP level one error. So we can see that gender K threw an error in the DMG segment. And if we look at the trace, we should see the same type of processing where the message came in, went to the service, and then went to the ACK folder that shows the error messages for those two errors. We'll now do a demonstration of creating a complete X12 detail map in under five minutes. This map is made up of a group 837P message and a target message of an 837P. We'll start with dragging and dropping the ISA segment, and then we'll look at the functional groups, which will require a grouping so that we can work with it more easily. Best practice here is to just create a GS and, and call it a functional group and then we can collapse it and use it as needed. We'll also need to do a for each loop on the functional group. As we go through each functional group, we wanna make sure that we're using these new functions that are available to create and add functional groups to the target set. We'll use a new key called FG key and we'll unload the messages every time we go through a loop. We're now going to add a new segment, a new uh, transaction set or functional group to the map. The interchange parent for this will be target and the doc type will be group. Now we can drag and drop the GS segment and we can also start to create a new group for the transaction sets. We'll just call this ST transaction sets. We'll also need at this point to add a new for each for this transaction set. And we'll change the key to match the transaction set as well. One of the new features we're using is the unload checkbox here, which helps manage memory by unloading messages through each loop. Now we're going to create in the target a new transaction set. 
The parent group will be the functional group, and the doc type will be the 837P. Now we can drag and drop each of the underlying segments. And of course, when you're doing your normal mappings, you'll probably have other mappings that you'll want to do within these groups. But for demonstration purposes, we're just going to do direct copies. You'll notice we do not drag and drop the end groups for the SE, the GE, and IEA, because the new features actually close those loops for you. We'll start with closing the first one, which is the transaction set. We will set, using one of the new functions, that is complete trailer and return clear. And again, we're closing the transaction set, so we use the functional group with the transaction set in it, and then we will say yes, we want to save by using one. We'll drop down to the next end each inside the last for loop, and in the functional groups, we will add the same new function to close that functional group as well. So we will use complete trailer and return clear. And again, we're closing the functional group with the FG key and saving it as one. Now, for our last one, we need to close the actual interchange itself. So in this case, we're actually going to set a variable and we'll call it just TVAR. And again, we're completing the trailer and returning. And in this case, the document is actually just the target. Now we should be able to compile this. And we should be able to run a test message to validate that this DTL mapping that we just created is actually able to process a message. As you can see, the test message works. Also, another enhancement is X12 SOAP, which we won't demonstrate fully, but want to show you that the X12 SOAP uh, service is available or the operation. You can just simply add it from selecting X12 and selecting SOAP. Uh, those, that adapter is now available and uh, can be used at your convenience. X12 batch processing. You should not expect poor processing times with your X12 batch processing. Uh, one of our customers was running batches for over 400,000 messages with SNP validation, and it was taking over 20 hours to process, and they thought this was the expected behavior. It is not. After applying some of the enhancements and going through some design improvements of the interface itself, using the for each loop and unloading messages as they were processed, along with other efficiencies in terms of how to cache external connections, we were able to get the processing time down to under one hour. So when you're processing large batches of messages, it's not uncommon for them to take some amount of time. A half a million messages are not gonna process in you know, one minute or two minutes, but anything over you know, 40, 45 minutes could be excessive and you should talk to your sales engineer or call for support. So key takeaways should be that InterSystems technology supports X12 SNP validation. Also, we're able to do X12 mappings fairly easily, and we can support those mappings in a single DTL. The other takeaway would be that Iris for Health can process large batch files efficiently, even with SNP validation. The most important thing to remember is InterSystems continues to invest and develop in our X12 and integration technologies and will continue to do so. Your next step should be, if you're interested in claims processing, there is another session. It's an overview to the ONC and CMS interoperability rules, which has to do with the new rules for claims processing. Thank you. If you need to contact us, you can contact John Goodgame with intersystems.com or Craig Lee, who is a product specialist at intersystems.com. Thank you.